Let's talk about encapsulation. I'm thinking that you have already discussed encapsulation in some of your previous courses. And the concept is that data and functionality are kept tightly together. And we're going to be able to see this and actually have to design this as we create this analysis class diagram. And it's going to become an important part of how you understand and develop these kind of diagrams is your understanding of encapsulation is going to become very important. So let me show you some examples. So let's say that I've got a customer account and I want to identify where am I going to put, I need the functionality to rent a movie. And I've got lots of different class classes now and I want to rent a movie. So how do I know where that goes? Well I know the customer is going to rent a movie but we're talking about the customer, the external actor on our system and what they want to do is rent a movie. But what in our system is going to have that functionality? If we say well that's in the customer account where we could uh, rent the movie, right? And so let's say that we just enter here and we say rent movie. Notice that the customer account has no movie. It doesn't have any data to go with it. And so here when we look at it, we say, well, a customer wants to do this. So we think it goes there, but that isn't correct. When they want to rent a movie, the functionality to do that needs to go where the data is. So where do movies reside? So if we go up here and we see that there are movie items, they can either be DVDs or movie files. So there's a movie item and we think well maybe it's associated with the movie item and then so let's talk about what a movie item is so let's say we've got Bambi movies and we have 45 DVDs and 18 movie files that are Bambi's and if a customer wants to rent a Bambi movie are they going to know whether they want the 13th DVD or the 27th DVD our system is going to have to decide that and who knows whether they're going to rent whether the movie that's going to be rented will be the 13th DVD or the 27th DVD. So the one that knows about all those movie items, all the Bambi movie items, will be the inventory record because it knows all the Bambi movies. It knows how many, all the 45 DVDs and all 18 movie files and it, and it contains all of them. So it's the one that's going to be able to know whether the 13th DVD is available or not. So here's the, here is the class that knows that data. And so this is where we need to add that functionality. To get the encapsulation right, I have got to find where the data is and put the functionality with the data. And now other, func other classes can call this function to rent the movie. The customer account can call it, the transaction account can call it, the uh, movie list maybe could call it. To rent this movie, uh, lots of different objects can call it, but it's contained, the functionality lives where the data is. And this becomes really critical to understand the difference between this. So let's look here at the movie item. Again, remember that each movie item has an ID. Uh, it also has location, uh, where it lives, right? So what its location is. And now we want to change its status. So let's say that the 13th DVD, Bambi DVD, is the one that just got rented. And so we want to change its status from available to rented. and and so that functionality really does need to belong with the movie item, and specifically with that object that's the 13th DVD. But notice there's no data here to identify what the current status is or to change it to something else. So this functionality is in the right location, but the data is missing. And so here we have to add, we need to say, oh, we're missing that data. We need to be able to store the current status of a movie item. So it's one more thing that needs to be changed. And notice I've got to clean things up as things grow. 
we have to make changes, right? And move things around. You might want to go ahead and design your classes so that they have plenty of space because you're, it will grow as you do this. So there, and functionality is in the right place, but it was missing the data and I needed to do that. Let's talk about the rate movie functionality. So we're going to allow this the customers to rate movies. So if this customer rents the 13th DVD of Bambi, when they rate that movie, do we want it to be associated with that 13th DVD or do we want it to be associated with the inventory record that has all the Bambi movies? And if we think about that, we think, well, the rating needs to go with all the Bambi movies. And so here we see, oh, that's in the wrong place. So we want to be able to take that and say, oh, that's since that's in the wrong place, I'm going to back it out of there, right? And instead, it's going to go over here where we rate the movie. And then we look. Okay, now we need to rate the movie, and that's the right location for this functionality. Where's the data associated with it? Notice, oh, it's, it's missing. We don't have the data. So we have to have the data here, and so we can add... Uh, star rating data member. So encapsulation means the functionality and the data are tightly combined. They're, they're together. They're in the same class and, and as tightly combined as they can be. Let's look at one more example. Here I have an actor class and an actor list class. And the actor list class contains has a con is a container of actors. So if I'm thinking about the functionality that I want to add a new actor, and we want to remember to put the functionality as close as we can to where things are happening, then I could say, well, I want it to be in the actor class that I add a new actor. But if you think about that carefully, this represents um, a single class, and if we want have multiple objects of that class. For example, let's say we already have an object for John Wayne, the actor, and we want to add a new actor object for Morgan Freeman, the actor. Could we go into that John Wayne actor and say, okay, now add this new actor? And that doesn't make sense because there's no relationship between the two actors. They are of the same type, but you wouldn't use one to create another one. So it really, it's actually in the actor list. So right now we have a list of, a container of actors. We have John Wayne and a whole bunch of other actors in our actor list, and we want to add another actor. Well, we're going to be adding it to that list. And so it's actually going to become, we're going to add an actor here. And we'll, if we add that functionality here, then we that will be added to the container, it will create a new actor, actor object, and that new actor object will be added to this actor container. And so the actual, the functionality belongs there. The same would be the case for remove actor, because we're going to be taking the actor from the list and running the destructor of the actor class, of the actor object. And so it fits there. Now what about editing an actor? Well, we could also edit the actor over here because we have a list of all the actors. So we could go through the list and find the actor and edit that actor. So we could do it through here, but it's not as close as it could be. In fact, if we did want to edit John Wayne, the actor object John Wayne, we would want to use that object directly to edit it because that's specifically what we want. And so it makes sense then to edit the actor here because it's a, more, a, a tighter encapsulation. It's directly related to the object that we want to interact with and do that functionality of. This will be interesting to learn about encapsulation.